I appreciate that. I, I got my mom to thank for that. <laughs> I remember one day I was in middle school um, and I came home crying and I was like, mom, they said they wouldn't buy my album when I'm famous. I was crying because they said they wouldn't, they wouldn't buy my album. She's like, do you hear what you're saying right now? <laughs> She's right. like, they see that you're going to be successful mm. and they're actively choosing not to support you, but they know that you're going to be successful. Exactly. And I didn't look at it like that. I was like, I just want everybody to like me. You know, I, I've always just been so nice and, you know, because I grew up in like a lot of um, domestic violence around me, I never was like a conflict person. I never wanted drama. I never wanted to fight. But I mean, sometimes, like I said, I grew up in Ipsy on the South Side. So gotta I gotta do what you gotta do sometimes. Sometimes I remember one time, I mean, I just, you gotta, like you said, you gotta do what you gotta do. Some situations, they just bring it out of you. Baby girl, what's your name? Let me talk to you, let me buy you a drink I'm T-Pain, you know me Convict music, nappy boy, ooh -ay. What's going on, beautiful people? It's your host, Drake, B. Drake Back with another Makings of You with Everything Culture And this morning, this afternoon, this evening, whenever you're listening We have the pleasure of introducing Ari how are we doing, Ari? Hello, I'm well. How are you? I'm so tired. Thank you so much for coming on. This, I, I'm a fan. I will say that. Like Ari is extremely talented. I met Ari on TikTok. Start following on TikTok. Maybe a month. Maybe a month ago. A little bit over. And she has a beautiful voice. She has extreme talent with music. Like. She know how to carry a tune and remix or cover music in a certain way that, you know, it's music you can listen to and relax to. It's like she she she's going to be somewhere else in the life higher. I'm glad I'm able to talk to her now, but I'm excited. Like, I am truly am excited and I appreciate you coming on here today. Mom, thank you so much for having me. I'm excited. I really oh. am. Okay. All right. <laughs> I know I asked you already, have you listened to The Makings of You before? And she said she listened to a little bit, y'all. And it's okay, because we don't mind with a little bit. But this is all about you. This is your episode. We're going to ask you a plethora of questions. We're going to ask you about your childhood, upbringing, your background, point of view and perspective. Majority of the questions are open-ended. So you may ask, like, what do you mean by that? Whatever you think I mean by it. Ooh. But it's, it's all about you. It's no wrong answers, because it's the makings of Ari. And... Thank you for sharing yourself with us. Oh, I'm excited. All right. Ari Michelle is here to be transparent. <laughs> oh, oh, okay, y'all. Y'all heard it right there. All right. <laughs> so, let's get into the first question. Ari, can you describe yourself for us? Mm. Ari is eclectic. She's very... Um, She's just like a gumbo of everything, you know? She's a ball of just emotion, like high energy, but chill, <laughs> player, but glassy, you know? She's, you know, <laughs> she's the yin and the yang. <laughs> she's the yin yang. <laughs> oh. Hi. Okay, I'm sorry. <laughs> all right, all right. I love it, I love it, I love it. So, Ari. What cultures do you represent? Oh, man. So, like, I mean, I'm Creole. I'm Black. Blackity Black Black. You know, um, I do have a little Guyanese in me, you know, what I want. But uh, I also, I guess if we're talking culture, I represent HBCU culture. I'm an HBCU baby, Hampton University. Okay. Um, the real HU. <laughs> I'm also, uh, I went to like a performing arts high school. I don't know if that's a culture, but I definitely didn't have like a regular high school experience. Um, yeah, from Detroit, Detroit culture 313. But my dad's always lived in Atlanta. So I've had like both in me. So I'm just I'm such a versatile gal, okay? 
I have just so many cultures I represent, but I believe that, you know, I represent them all to the fullest just by being me. All right. All right. Thank you. Now, <laughs> you just said you got a little bit of Southern in you. So I have, I, once again, difficult question for me to ask, even though I ask it every episode, but do you mind sharing your age with us? Yeah, it's not a difficult question. I'm 24. Okay. Okay. I'm yeah. Southern. My grandmother would slap me beside my head if I did that, you know. But... Yes, never ask you. Yeah, I understand. Okay. So, Ari, can you define your childhood and upbringing to us? Um, you know, I feel like my life has just been full of like dualities. Like I've, I grew up like. My dad, he's from Tuskegee, Alabama. My mom, you know, she's from Michigan. And, you know, in Michigan, we we didn't have like the most money. We lived on like the South side in like the townhouses. And, you know, we just, we was making it shake. But like, you know, I would go to Alabama. Well, I wouldn't go to Alabama because he lived in Atlanta all my life. So during the summers, I would go to Atlanta and, you know, I would experience the South, but I'm still like a city girl. And um, it was just like a duality of like learning life in terms of manners. And, you know, it's so different. My mom, she's like, you don't have to say yes, ma'am, no, sir. And my grandma on my dad's side is like, um, yes, what? <laughs> yes, what? I got to switch a couple times, okay, because I was just like, oh, my bad. <laughs> um, I would say, like, I wrote a song about this. Um, basically, I was just talking about, like, you know, mama never really had a good job, but she filled her home with love nonstop. So, like, even though we ended up just kind of, like, struggling a lot of the times, we did get, like, a lot of help, of course, from, like, you know, my grandma, my aunties when they could, but, you know, it was just kind of us just trying to figure it out, um, especially for like high school for me. I, we experienced like a lot of homelessness. That was like the beginning of like homeless, I guess, the journey of homelessness for us. Um, but I think that everything has made me who I am today. Like, I'm not afraid of my past. And I think that a lot of times people try to say that those situations that happened are like negative things and you shouldn't talk about them, but they've molded me into who I am today. I move in this world with a lot of humility because of a lot of the situations that I've been through, you know? I I don't try to... I just put prerequisite, you know, thoughts or opinions onto people because I don't know what their upbringing is and they don't know what mine is. A lot of people are like, you're so smiley all the time and da 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 but they don't know half of the things that I've been through. So I just, um, I had, I didn't have the best childhood, but I have a, a lot of fond memories. So I would say that, you know, me having to grow up a little bit earlier, definitely allowed like made me the old soul that I am like everybody's like you're just so wise for who you are but I will say like I still have good memories within my upbringing I'm not going to act like it was just the worst thing on the planet like everybody my family is amazing individuals and everybody has done the best that they could so I, I can't say anything about that amazing yeah Y'all are listening to the makings of Ari with everything culture. Y'all see why I have become on the show now. Y'all understand? <laughs> we love it. And that's why we do the makings of you. You know, get to know yeah. you. You know, what anything else. So thank you. Thank you. Yes. So what were the roles of your caregivers when you were coming up? Mm, the roles of my caregivers? Well, in terms of like things that have been instilled in me from the different caregivers in my life. I would say, I'm a, I'll keep it real general because I, I can get deep a lot of times. So, I mean, my dad, I feel like my dad, he instilled the musical like lyricism in me, you know? My dad was offered a, um, a record deal with Def Jam growing up. You know, he was a rapper. So 
whenever I would see him, um, we freestyle in a car. And then when I went to high school with him, he was like every morning trip, we had a beat on and we was like freestyling and going on Facebook live and stuff. And I remember we recorded our first song when I was like 11, it's called Stunting. And I was like, I ain't little Wayne, but I'm stunting like my daddy. Like we, and then we had my other sisters on there. Like <laughs> it, it was, it was vibe. We had, I think it was like over a young drill beat or something like that. But it was real Atlanta for sure. Um, my mom, she definitely instilled like, you know, a lot of just real life stuff when it comes to me. Um, you know, just uh, the way that I move in a room and, you know, she's such a caring person. So, you know, she taught me caring, but she also taught me like boundaries and, you know, some of it was consciously, some of it was subconsciously, you know, it was like, you know, just me watching her and just like, okay, okay, when I do this, I should do this. Or when I do that, I shouldn't do that. You know, she also taught me, um, the importance of family, I would say, like, we are all we got. And sometimes I have to learn to not be like, well, I've, I've gotten over that stage, but there was a point in time where I was just like, so dependent. I call everybody like, Nanny or Rini, like, especially because I'm a Libra and we always want to hear like people's insight on stuff, you know, like, should I do this? Should I do that? Um, but I love my mom. Like my mom, she definitely taught me a lot. I guess if I was to get into like my aunties, they taught me like fun and they taught me like my grandma too. She taught me to be about my business. Okay. Detroit women do not play about their business. <laughs> if there's one thing they're going to do, they're going to get it done. So <laughs> I've always admired that about like my grandma, my aunties, they've always had that hustle in them. And I got that from them for sure, for sure. And then I just love how classy everybody is. My, like my aunties, my grandma, my mom, like everybody like from Detroit, they're just so classy, but they're bosses. And I love that. And that's something that I'm super proud of that I have, because I think that it's a nice balance, you know, you can, you can still be gorgeous and be just like about your stuff, be about your business. Like, you know, it's nice to look good, but also to handle the best. <laughs> right, all right. Shout out to your caregivers, your peoples. Yes. Oh, my yeah. uncle Rob too. Shout out Uncle Rob and my Uncle Henry, Auntie Barbara, Auntie Tia, like all my aunties and uncles. I got a lot of women. <laughs> Hey, that's what we talking about. Love it, lo love it, love it. Seriously, so yeah. Shout, shout out aunties and uncles. Shout out my peoples. Yes. Hey, okay. Hey, let, you better let them know you out here. Okay. Right, you right. shout me out. I, I love y'all. <laughs> Cause you, hey, you know you go hear it later if you miss somebody. I know, Auntie Angie. Look, <laughs> look at you, hey. You can see me today. Cover them, cover them. But we got time. We got time. We give them some more love in a minute. But, I love you. You mentioned that you have a sibling. Do you? How many siblings do you have? Oh man, a lot. <laughs> on my mom's side, I have two brothers. On my dad's side, I have two sisters. But I also have like bonus sisters and brothers. So if I was to tally it all up, I have like two. I think like seven sisters and three brothers. So I have ten siblings. <laughs> yeah, me beat. Okay, you winning. You you, you like in you like in first place right now, I guess. Okay, congratulations. You got it. <laughs> <laughs> so, how do you feel about your education so far in life? Oh, <laughs> you know, I would say college kind of disappointed me when it came to the education standpoint, not Hampton per se, but I don't like the structure of, you know, higher education and how we spend two years kind of learning the basics of things that we've already spent 12 years learning about. And so it's like, college is already expensive. And you're telling me that I gotta spend these first two years spending my money on more stuff that I've already learned about. And then you only give me these two years to really fine tune what I'm trying to go out into the real world and pursue. It definitely is a little frustrating, especially because I was a music major and a lot of people do not 
believe like you can just tell the perspective of music as a major like you know compared to a stem major people were kind of like oh y'all not really doing nothing as a music major but and because people thought like that i had a lot of one credit classes so i every semester of college i took 18 credits so i was working full like part time i was also you know going to choir rehearsal i went to i was in two choirs so i had like choir rehearsal two times a day mondays and wednesdays and then i had choir rehearsal on fridays i was also in jazz band so i had rehearsal for jazz band on thursdays and i was also trying to be involved in other stuff on campus i'm in a music fraternity i was a part of campus curl so like my life was jam-packed every single semester every single day I had something going on like and people like I understand that STEM is definitely very heavy but music also was very time consuming and I spent a lot of time just doing a lot of music things but it's prepared me for real life so I would say I'm grateful for that for sure wow miss busybody okay love it oh so i mean i was the section leader of two choirs for like from sophomore year to senior year of college so you know me having to teach others and set an example and be a leader like you know it really meant a lot to me like i don't care if it's music it's what i'm passionate about and i believe that i it inspires me now like when people are like ari you know you really inspired me in college like you were somebody i looked up to and I, especially because i was a soprano mm. <laughs> mm. soprano what <laughs> so I and I had to it. learn both parts. In, in concert choir, I had to learn soprano one and two because whenever my director needed me to switch from a uh, one part to another, you know, I had to be on it. I had to know everything. So it was one of those things. I was like, look, I'm right from my, my choir. I'm going to do what I got to do. <laughs> I am impressed. Okay. I'll say that again and again. I believe it though. I believe it. <laughs> Once again, y'all, I'll be seeing her working on TikTok. And I like, I, and she just do, does it with a smile on her face. You know, oh. that's something I really value too. She loves what she does. So that is amazing. And oh, when you're talking about college, you're about to make me bring back season one. We had Ooh. a whole episode talking about, you know, I'm one of my only friends that graduated from college. And I'm like, it's a scam. It's a racket. Like, it, it, it's, it's, we ain't gonna take up all that time right here. This is the makings of Ari, y'all. I don't want to get sidetracked. We got questions. We learn a little bit more about her. But thank you for sharing. Thank you for sharing. Oh, of course. So, what was your first sense of responsibility? Oh. Mm. Mm. <laughs> My first sense of responsibility was. I guess my first job, well, no, I would say like my brothers, <laughs> you know, watching my baby brothers, you know, making sure that they were good. I look back at videos. I used to do YouTube in high school and I'm like, I used to talk to them. Like I was like, they said, hey, mama, I'd be like, no, sit down. Like, where are you <laughs> and those are my babies. Like, I love this so much. So you know, I, I do feel like, cause we have a wide age gap. Like my middle brother and I are like eight, nine years apart. And then my other brother and I are like 11 years apart. So, you know, I, it wasn't really, you know, us growing up together. It was more so, don't you put your hand on that stove? Like, you <laughs> <laughs> I loved it though. I really did. Those were my babies. Um, I guess you could say, outside of my brothers another responsibility would be I got my first job working at Root Chitta. it was this wing spot <laughs> and um I would go there after school I like like I said I went to a performing arts high school so I would have like rehearsals for musicals and stuff like that or choir rehearsals and then I would have to go on to work and I've always been into customer service and I would answer the phones and I don't even know what I did with my little paychecks, but I know that I enjoyed that job, okay? 
you remember how much you were getting paid per hour? Oh my gosh. I was probably getting paid minimum wage. Like we were like $7, seven dollars, seven twenty-five. Okay, okay. Listen, I didn't care. I was like, I got some money coming in. We all started from the front of the bottom. And trust me, it, it makes sense because you have that person, um, that customer service personality you know because you yeah. smiling you know you know it it, it it makes sense it makes sense so okay what's the name of the place again oh ruchida r-u-c-h-d-a basically it was the first two letters of their three children's names and they created the restaurant based off of that and so i was like oh i think their names i i don't i don't even want to lie to you i was yeah, gonna say it's cool we, Chad we, and David, hey, we, ain't wor- we ain't even worried about them we're talking about <laughs> you right now but thank y'all right. <laughs> appreciate that hard work so what were and what are your beliefs um my beliefs agape I believe in agape. I believe in God's love. I believe that I, (laughs) it's only been maybe like a year or two since I've fully um, engulfed myself in that practice because, um, you know, agape, like practicing God's love is very, very hard. That means you have to love people in every form of who they are you know you have to take people like you don't have to take them for who they are for sure but you have to receive them as God would receive them and that means in all their flaws all their imperfections and you have to truly learn how to love people from that so man it's been a beautiful journey because I've in turn learned to love myself more I realized I was such a a big critic of myself and, um, you know, practicing agape, like, I'm like, I have to give myself grace. Like I'm giving everybody else grace. I got to give myself grace too. Cause you know, we can't show up perfect every single day. You know, we trying and the effort is there. And I think that some days you got to just take that, you know, I can't be superwoman 25, eight all the time. So Agape is truly what I I live in, and um, there's a lot of people in this world who just, you know, are filled with hurt and are filled with pain, and um, they project that onto others, and that's why I chose to move in agape, because they're not mad at me. (laughs) They're mad at that, that inner child that they haven't forgiven for five years you know and I've just been like okay all right you know I'll I'll take that but (laughs) I'm gonna pray for you and I'm gonna pray for healing of your heart and I'm not going to take it personal because I know that you know I don't know I don't know what you're going through and I'm not going to sit here and you know tear you down because what are, what do you have going on? I might just be your thirteenth reason, and I refuse. You know, a lot of people don't consider that. They're just kind of like, oh, we're just going to talk about people and hurt their feelings, and especially on social media nowadays, like everybody just comments because they think it's funny, or you know, they think that oh, I'm gonna get some traction on my page if I make this rude remark, and it's just like these are human beings. You don't know what they're going through behind closed doors. Y'all are going to end up tearing somebody apart and you don't even know. And so that's why, like I said, I'm moving to God, baby, man. God's love. I'm going to have to put a star next to your name. (laughs) Wow. So look at this, y'all. I'm going to even cut this out. I really appreciate talking to you and for you being at where you're at in life right now and to have that that outlook is amazing, seriously, because I have to add agape to our website now and to, uh, back up to our mission statement because this is the reason I started the podcast. <laughs> so who has been the biggest influence in your life? Man, the biggest influence, my grandma. Mm-hmm. My grandma has been the biggest influence in my life because she's so selfless. Um, you know, I think I've 
I've just witnessed her just give, 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 give to just everybody and um, and never want anything in return, you know? Of course, she might see some earrings I'm wearing. Oh, I wonder who bought those earrings. Of course it was you, Nanny. Thank you. I love you. <laughs> but um, everything for her, it just comes from like, she's just such a pure soul. Like, I truly do feel like she's such an angel. And she's inspired me because it's just like, she just, she just does what she has to do. She gets crafty, you know, she figures it out one way or another. She never takes no for an answer. And, um, you know, that's grit. That takes grit. That takes determination. That takes, you know, results. <laughs> <laughs> you gotta figure it out and um that inspired me so much because she's always made a way for her family one way or another and um she's like my best friend my grandma is my best friend my nanny banana I love her so much we talk like almost every day we don't talk for a day she'd be like I ain't heard from you <laughs> as my girl I'll be calling her like she's the first person I'll be calling for a lot of stuff I just be like guess what like <laughs> I just and that's why I go so hard too because I I want to get to a point where she don't feel like she gotta you know save the world you know I want her to go on trips and you know to experience life she she has barely traveled in her life and I want her to see the world I want us to go get pina coladas in the Bahamas okay you know I want us to go to France and go try some baguettes. I want her to see some things, okay? And so she's just my, she's my why. Like her, my brothers, my mom, like I just really want us to, my family struggle, 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 struggle. And I just like, man, I want to be the person to break those curses. Like I really want us to be okay. I want to be the person to send my brothers to school. They ain't even got a debt when they graduate, you know, so they don't have to worry about student loans. I want my mom to be in a house rent-free, house paid for, just paid in utilities, girl, you know, like my family. I know I said my grandma, but my grandma is like the nucleus of the family, so it's like it goes down to my family, too. They just, everybody inspires me, <laughs> so yeah. I know I can get a little long with it, but my family. <laughs> uh, Ari, this is your episode, okay? <laughs> you know, I, I, we are here to listen to you. We're here to learn you. This is the makers <laughs> of Ari. Once again, this is not yeah. the makers of anybody else. It's the makers of you. So okay. take your time. Speak your truth. Be transparent, as you said earlier. Thank you. <laughs> man it has been so much like life i'm 24 and i lived like at least three lives i could you not it sounds like it trust me i'm like i'll be giving people some passes because oh they're young they're gonna learn so you make me want to think different okay everybody's oh, did you ever hear this when you were growing up oh you're different did you ever hear that all the time oh, all the time i used to hate it but no, i mean just, too yeah but it's one thing you are, trust me. And the thing I had to, I'm just now in my 30s accepting, like, I am different than a lot of other people. Mm -hmm. It doesn't make me better than anybody else, but I do think differently than a lot. So mm -hmm. appreciate you for you being you once again. I so. appreciate that. I, I got my mom to thank for that. <laughs> I remember one day I was in middle school um, and I came home crying and I was like, mom, they said they wouldn't buy my album when I'm famous. I was crying because they said they wouldn't, they wouldn't buy my album. And she's like, do you hear what you're saying right now? <laughs> she's right. like, they see that you're going to be successful mm -hmm. and they're actively choosing not to support you, but they know that you're going to be successful. Exactly. And I didn't look at it like that. I was like, I just want everybody to like me, you know? I, I've always just been so nice and, you know, because I grew up in like a lot of um, domestic violence around me, I never was like a conflict person. I never wanted drama. I never wanted to fight. But I mean, sometimes, like I said, I grew up in Ipsy on the South Side. So gotta I gotta do what you gotta do sometimes. Sometimes. <laughs> I remember one time, I mean, I just, 
you gotta like you said you gotta do what you gotta do some situations they just bring it out of you but I'm not a I'm not a fighter I I really am a lover I feel like we can talk out difficult conversations and you know we can have healthy dialogue to get to a resolution we don't have to I think a lot of times fighting is frustration a lot of people put their hands on one another because they haven't been able to sit down and process what the other person is saying this is just communication of frustration and i hate that in the very fine print of everything culture we do withhold the the, the option for hands but that's the last way because we all <laughs> everything you said last resort you know last resort but they are there okay that is there but exactly because that is another way of communication i love how you said communication frustration of i would say it's communication of minds that we're not able to meet verbally or intellectually on the base because that is a human part of human nature is physical right. communication let's say that on numerous I, levels montgomery bra mm, you, you feel me he is a, I'm not lie. if i was there i might have laid a hand or two myself so no. i i'm not even gonna act like i wouldn't have because that was uncalled for 100 percent. and it, it was this country is based off that so when people say you not to be that way We'll talk. That's for a different episode. Once again, this is the makings of Ari because we hey, can go down a whole rabbit hole with that. We can get oh, deep. Okay, okay. Um. Oh, what? but I, I could tell you this. This is yes. something about me in middle school in sixth grade. I started an organization. No, I think I started in seventh grade. It was called Original Individuals of the Chosen Generation. This was after sixth grade because sixth grade I got bully real heavy and then I ended up going to a school in Ipsy I was going to school in Wayne my mom she didn't want me to go to school in Ipsy I lived on the south side in Ipsy but she didn't like we went to school in Westland where my grandma lives so I would she would just commute every morning and drive 25 minutes to take me there but after a while she's like you gonna have to take the bus <laughs> so I started going to Ipsy middle so I went from like a predominantly white high um elementary school middle school to go on to like ipsy which is like I, it's just super diverse i wouldn't even say it's like majority black but it's just diverse you got a lot of interracial like kids you got black you got like hispanic you got orient you got everybody okay and so it definitely was a little bit of a um a shock for me but it wasn't wasn't too bad I just had to get down with more of the slang I had to learn a little bit more slang um but yeah I started the organization uh in seventh grade I remember during that time like it was just like that preteen stage for a lot of us was difficult and I always wanted to just be there for people I know I remember one time I stopped um one of my friends from like self-harm and you know I made it so that one of like I um I stopped somebody else from like suicide at one time like and even though I was helping everybody else out I was still just like personally sad sometimes but I realized it was also because I'm an empath like so <laughs> I'm an empath so after I've been helping out all these people I'm like dang why am I so sad and sometimes even in college like I just now got the hang of all of that like being emotionally intelligent and recognizing the feelings that I have right now are not my own because I was sad all the time like I remember one time my roommate she was like going through something and I called my mom I was like mama depressed and she was like why and I was like I don't know <laughs> and she was like it's because you're an empath she was like you don't understand that like you pick up on people's energy really frequently you have to learn how to center yourself and you have to cleanse your energy so then I started really getting into like you know just different practices that grounded me and you know allow for me to really stay rooted during a lot of difficult times where I could like it's a difference between empathizing for somebody and then taking on their whole story you know I had to learn how to disassociate from the two let it go okay say that Go ahead. Of course, again, this is, it leads into our next question. 
how do you relax? How do you fill yourself up? Mm, I love water. So um, I love nature. I love um, talking to God and I love talking to him in his home. So like, I don't like a lot of, I like, I love quiet because I'm a musician and I'm listening all the time. I love stillness too. I, I feel like that's how I center myself is being quiet. I would drive with no music. <laughs> a lot of people who ride with me, <laughs> my mom, after a while, I remember I was like taking her to work in the morning sometimes. And like, I would just forget to play music for her because I'm playing music for you. I'm, when I drive, I meditate. Like, I'm just, you know, talking, I'm just processing things. I feel like my brain processes with the road. Like, you know what I'm saying? I write some great songs when I'm driving too. I'm not even gonna lie to you. Like my brain just, it moves really fluidly in in the car or like, you know, I love hiking. So it's this, um, this trail I go to and they have a little waterfall after like 45 minutes. So I'll go there and I'll just meditate and I just practice gratitude. I'm really into practicing gratitude a lot lately because when I could be upset that things aren't going my way, when I start to see a lot of things that are happening that I wouldn't even have expected, I'm like, you know what? <laughs> it gonna be worse. So I, I get peace and I relax by water, um, nature. Uh, I love music. <laughs> I know that that's such a cliche thing for a musician, but like sound frequencies, subliminals, jazz music. I love me some Duke Ellington, John Coltrane. Um, yeah, just being still because I move a lot. So relaxing is being still. Wow. Wow. That's amazing. My <laughs> wife, my wife loved Coltrane as well. And she listened to the car with no music and it just drives me crazy. I'm like, turn something up. Yeah, we get, oh, but no. I understand it, but I understand it and I value it. So thank you. Oh, it's so peaceful. Now, when I'm in a car with another person and like I've done enough meditating and it's quiet, I'm like, let me put something on. But for the most part, if I'm like by myself, I'm either listening to nothing or I'm listening to like instrumentals or beats that like my people have sent to me and I'm trying to like think of something to write over it. And then I'm like, I'll press my Apple watch while I'm driving. Da, 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 da. And then, you know, just go cut it when I get home or something. Working. Do y'all hear that? Like once again, I've seen her record, yeah. I've seen her mix and master, and she just she makes it seem like seamless, you know. Hey. Seamless. <laughs> Thank and, you. Thank you so much. And going to our next question is what are your passions and how did you get into them? Oh man, I love a lot of stuff, and I realized like as I've gotten older, I love music, but I also love like cooking. I love interior decorating. Like those two things really excite me, you know. I love spending time with my boyfriend, you know. We could be doing anything, it don't matter. I don't care. We could be looking at a rock. Babe, look at this rock. <laughs> um, but cooking, I love like I get all these inspirational meals from like TikTok and Instagram, and I just be cooking them. And like the first try, they be pretty good. Like I tried marinade chicken the other day for my boyfriend and it was so good. Like he brought it to work the next day. His coworker was like, girl, I need a plate. Like <laughs> what, what, what type of chicken is this again? So it's like, think of similar to like a Tuscan chicken a little bit, mm. you know? You got your sun-dried tomatoes. I have a spinach in mine. And then I did cut up like some different colored um, little like grape tomatoes. So the red ones, the orange ones, the yellow ones. And I sauteed them up, put them in like this little, I made like a sauce, kind of like a gravy a little bit. It was almost like a gravy. And then I made my homemade red mashed potatoes. And um, I put that as the base with some sauteed green beans. And then I put the chicken on the top with the grape sauce. Okay. And some garlic bread. It was so good. So mm. good. <laughs> mm. Gotta check that. 
And when you say, I love when you say, stuff too. And I love fresh pressed juices and mixology and like, cause I'm a bartender, you know, by trade. Yeah. I bartended, I would say like junior year of college to now, even now I bartend, like I work in film and television, but we're on strike right now. So your girl is back bartending. Okay. I've been bartending for like at least seven months now. I've already became the lead bartender. Ain't that something? Ain't that a bliss. Just because I love it. I love it. I really do. I used to bartend, but oof. Uh, we'll talk about that. <laughs> it's fun though. It's fun though. And you and oh, with twice. Your, with, <laughs> Yeah, with your with your personality, I highly believe you're you're successful at it. You know, you seem like a very inviting person. Um, mm-hmm. You know, I would tell people just if you have regulars, just remember what they like to drink, and they'll love you. If you oh, have a I love my regulars, and I kid you not, I probably remember at least half the restaurant's orders when they come in. I don't even know how I remember it because I don't even be knowing what I be eating. But I can tell you, like, when they come in, I'm like, you want your 10-piece honey lemon peppers, sweet potato fries with a little blue cheese? Like, you know, and they love that, though. It's the little things. You know, I know my um, one of my regulars, Miss Karen, I know when she come in, she want her lemon drop. And I know that I love to, like, you know, just rim it up and then bring it to the table and shake it up in front of her. She always loves that just it it enhances the experience and like I said I'm a Libra we like nice things too so I treat people how I want to get treated when I go out okay I want to get treated like royalty (laughs) that's amazing love it this is great yes how you feeling I'm feeling good okay 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 so listen I'm a chatterbox Hey, I love, I love good conversation. My friends, it's so crazy because like I've been doing like a couple interviews for podcasts lately mm-hmm. and my friend Stefan, he's uh, one of my great friends, but he's also um, like one of my producers. He did AWH, my EP, along with like Jeremy and um, Mark Quinn Mason. But uh, Stefan, like in our studio sessions, after we were done, we would just talk. He'd be like, Ari, you need to talk more. He was like, the when you talk like you speak really like it was like people need to hear what you're saying and I was just like oh, well <laughs> I feel like I, I told myself I was like I'm gonna be more intentional with talking this year because I realized I don't say as much as I could and that's because I feel like I rather I'm an action-oriented person. I'd rather show you better than I can tell you. Mm-hmm. I think a lot of people do a lot of this. Mm-hmm. Of this, not enough mm-hmm. more. <laughs> and um, I just want it, I want it to be a balance for me. So I am grateful I'm doing more interviews and I'm like, okay, you're going to talk more. You're going to, you know, really let people get a little bit more into your noggin. So I'm grateful. I really am for this opportunity. No. Can you give us a recommendation? Or your favorite book, mm. movie, and a television series. It ain't got to be your favorite, but what do you recommend? How about that? Oh my gosh, I'm such a little kid when it comes to uh, movies. I love The Incredibles. <laughs> the music is so good. <laughs> Ever since I was younger, the music was just so good. But a new movie I would recommend, They Clone Tyrone. That movie, yeah. Did we talk about this already? We did. We talked about okay. that. TikTok live, but you okay. know, I've been telling everybody that movie is amazing. So I'm good. A, books, man. I I love, love, love Sister Soldiers, <laughs> her all of her books. You know, I read them growing up, and you know, The Coldest Winter Ever, all of those. I'm, I'm, I'm a fictional book girly, I'm not gonna lie. I just got into like the four agreements and all of that, of course. So, you know, I think that's a life staple that everybody should read. But, you know, I love fictional novels. I think the last one I just read was like, I think it was by like Eric, Eric Dixon. It was like a, <laughs> it was like one. <laughs> it was about to say. I didn't know. I didn't know what it was about. But I had got into it and I was like, well, I'm not gonna stop now. It was just like, well, hey, we grown. We grown. Here. Hey, you know. But it was good. We are adults. 
It's but all I do love Sister Soldier, her series, especially the Midnight and the Meaning of Love. Um, that was the first time I read about like polyamory and polygamy. And as much as I don't believe it works for me, it did allow for me to have an open mind about like just different archetypes and different dynamics of relationships because I was like, who child could be me? But <laughs> But definitely, I enjoyed reading that series. It just taught you um, just how deep love can get. Mm. You, know? mm. you need your television series. Uh-huh. Oh, okay. Okay. Proud family. Got you. Oh. Oh, I thought <laughs> I said I need your television series. And I thought that's exactly what you went to. I love the Proud Family, but no television series. Something I've been watching a lot of lately. Oh my gosh, Run the World. I love that show. It's um it's on HBO. Robert Glasper is the music supervisor on there. I think him and Terrence Martin. Um, and it's just about it's like a black modern day sex in a city, I guess you could say really jazzy about like sophisticated successful women in new york and um i love it it's amazing i love that show run the world we run it alex isley does the theme song and it's just like everything <laughs> mm, okay i'm gonna have to put everybody on game about that all right yeah. all right all right thank you thank you so if you had a futuristic phone okay and this phone had the type of technology that would allow you to call anyone, anything, at any time. And they have to have a conversation with you. Who would you call? Give me three people. Oh. Or three things. Oh. Mm. Dead or alive? Dead or alive. Use your imagination. My imagination. One. I call my grandpa. I love him. I was my favorite cowboy. <laughs> um, I, I used to call him that a lot. He used to call me Miss Ariana. And like, just, um, I remember when I was growing up, you know, a lot of the times he would just give me a lot of like wisdom, a lot of like messages that I received, like as I got older. Like I remember one time I was calling him and I was like 13 and I was telling him about like, one of my sisters, I was like, yeah, you know, she just acting all grown and stuff. He was like, you 13 going on 36. He was like, <laughs> he said, enjoy your life. Mm. <laughs> and, you know, as I got older, I was like, wow, you know, I do need to kind of youngen up a little bit. Like in college, I was just so, um, I think it comes from like a childhood kind of behavior of mine of just like not wanting to make the same mistakes as like you know my parents so I, I used to be like real straight and narrow I was always trying to just do the right thing and you know the right thing but I said look man <laughs> make some mistakes before you know you get grown and you're like dang you know <laughs> I'm too old to be doing this now <laughs> I'm doing my best to be quiet continue go ahead do your thing but yeah, I would call my grandpa. I would call Ella Fitzgerald. <laughs> I would call her because, you know, as a woman in that era, I know it was very difficult for her to um, probably speak her mind in the industry. And so I would just love to like hear her inspiration, her why and what kept her going and, you know, what allowed for her to be assertive when necessary in those rooms and, you know, just protect her boundaries and what she believed in. Um, my third person, I would say, mm, that's hard. That's really hard. I could talk to Beyonce. Listen, I'm sorry. <laughs> I love me some big. After seeing the Renaissance performance, man, I just would love to just talk to her about longevity because mm -hmm. I think that a lot of people in this industry, you see them for a couple of years and then you wonder what happened to them. And I think that she's done a very good job of 
staying in the in the times in the now you know you don't think of immediately destiny's child when you think of beyonce like she's allowed for that to be a stepping stone for her to create her own platform of her own now everybody's talking about renaissance nobody is talking about her album four right now even though that is a listen it's a topic of conversation she got but, another album out no that's like a previous album of hers but I'm saying like as the time progresses, she still gives you quality bodies of work that you can talk about within that time. And that's what I mean by longevity. You know, we're still not talking about projects that have passed. Like, of course we are, but now we're comparing her current work to her work in the past. And I think that you have to respect that. A lot of people, you know, they have so much to say about Beyonce, but one thing I can say about her is that she has really remained relevant in these 25 years and I I would just she said that on her tour she said she's been doing this for 25 oh, years I would say and has so, it been 25 years yeah 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 it's been 25 I was 12 years. years old when I remember her dropping yeah. yeah so I would love to just be um a student of longevity <laughs> You know, I know that takes adaptability, but I want to hear what she thinks about it. Mm, that's amazing. Okay, go ahead then. So we have Ella Fitzgerald, your grandfather, and, Happy. Beyonce, and, yeah. and Beyonce. Okay. Beyonce. Noted, noted. Thank you. So, Ari, what has been an impactful moment in your life? Mm. I would say one of the most impactful moments of mine was performing at the Sydney Opera House in Australia in 2019. <laughs> um, the trip was just deeper than, you know, being out the country for the first time, because that was my first time out the country. But like the story of getting there and then the story of being there and experiencing something outside of this country and then a feeling of doing what I love outside of this country, it just affirmed that my my dreams can be bigger than what I've ever imagined. So the story, out of 12,000 applicants, um, only 80 were selected to perform at the Sydney Opera House that year. I got nominated myself and a few of my uh, peers in my class. Um, we all got nominated by our voice teacher, Mr. Fulton, my fave. Shout out to Mr. <laughs> and, um, Fulton. Shout out to Mr. Fulton. Now he's at, listen, he is doing his thing in Cali. He's at the uh, San Francisco Opera, I believe. And he's doing phenomenal things. When I tell you he is the person who gave me hope in my voice, because I was about to give up on singing. I was just about to go to school for production. Like, I started freshman year as like a music recording technology major, which was, um, you know, you have a, a instrument and then a minor in piano, and then you take tech classes. And so I did end up finishing in that, but I was about to switch my major to audio production. I had told everybody, audio production is just having to take piano class and then learning about production, making like, of course, making your beats, but then mixing, mastering, like everything. And um, I remember I had told my department, I was like, I'm, I think I want to switch my major to audio production because I had bombed my jury my freshman year, like my voice jury, I bombed it. And um, they were like, you better not do that. That is not a good idea for you. <laughs> like, I think I was talking to Dr. May and Mr. Dickinson, that was our department head and my choir director. And they were like, that is not a smart idea for you. <laughs> do not switch your major. And so I stuck by it. And um, I ended up having a new vocal teacher next the year after. And Mr. Fulton was just, he changed my life. Like vocally, he gave me the confidence I didn't know I needed with my voice. I remember I was singing to him one time in one of our lessons and like, you know, tears had started welling up in his eyes from my singing. And I was about to start crying because I was like, I've never brought that out of anybody and I didn't know I was capable of doing that 
And so I was like, dang, I got to keep going. So he nominated me to go to Australia and I auditioned and I ended up getting accepted. You know, you did have to pay to go. And I was bar like serving during the summer. So I was trying to like have people donate when they could. But then I was also working and save up money to go. I ended up getting scammed like a week before I was supposed to go. And that was my plane ticket money. So <laughs> I was just like, man, ain't that something? I think they got like $1,100 out of me. And um, yeah, my department head, she blessed me. Like she um, had helped me like fundraise and like find money. Like I just was trying to find money from here, there, everywhere. She was just helping me out and I ended up going. And when I tell you, I cried when I landed there. Like when they said walking to Sydney, I have a video of me literally crying because it just was like to have people believe in me this much to do something like this. And I get over there. I was like, man, like it took a village to truly get me over there. I had my church help me. My dad's friends helped me. Like everybody was coming together to help me. And I thank each and every person who donated to help me get to Australia because that was a monumental moment in my life. And now I'm just like, I'm ready to go everywhere now. <laughs> um, so I, yeah, 12,000 applicants, 80 people ended up going so like three of my other friends from school ended up getting accepted and we all ended up going. My family was uh, originally hesitant. They were like, no, we don't want you to go. Like, well, not everybody, but like my grandma, of course, it's fires over there and all of this stuff. Like they ain't even been to Australia. They don't, I'm going to Sydney. I'm in a city. Like <laughs> I'm not about to be out there in like all Melbourne or something, you know? So they was just like, don't go and all that. That's a long flight. And it was but I still took it. Um, it was three hours from Virginia to Houston. And then it was 17 hours straight from Houston to Sydney. And um, yeah, it was interesting, but I made it. We were learning songs. We did a Dutch song called Berusa Air. We did some classical pieces. We did some Beethoven. We did, um, I think like one spiritual, like Negro spiritual. We did... Um, we did like a diverse selection and it was just really cool to go there. A lot of people were talking to me during that time. They were like, cause I had some people I met from like NYU, which I got denied from. And um, I think somebody from Juilliard and they were just, they had heard me sing during a the time there and they were like, why aren't you at NYU? Do you want to just come get some lessons from my vocal professor? Like, you're so great. And I was just like, I wanted to go to an HBCU knowing I got denied from NYU and I didn't get accepted into Berkeley College of Music, the top music school. It's in Boston, but it was just so expensive. It was $60,000 a year. So I was like, my aunt, she went to Clark and she Shout was like, Clark. Mom, my mom went to Tuskegee and um, my dad went to like Selma University and like my my mom and my dad, they didn't end up finishing because my mom, she ended up getting pregnant with me. And that's why my degree means so much to me because I finished for all of us. Like mm. I got my degree, baby. Like <laughs> oh, really? But um just knowing that like my family went to HBCUs, I was like, I'm gonna go. And Hampton had my major. So I feel like when I went to Australia, I represented um a part of the world that people don't see a lot, you know. I'm a, a black girl. I go to Hampton singing classical music, you know, with with everybody. There was people from New Zealand, Japan, like everywhere. And my friends were there too, so they can say the same thing. But um, it was just, it was something that I knew was bigger than me. And it was a spiritual trip for me. And I'm just, it's impactful to my life because even now, like with my EP that I dropped, my top cities are Tokyo, Osaka, you know, Berlin. You know, I got people in South Africa that listen to me and it doesn't seem like a stretch to get over there one day to perform my tracks for them. Like I know for a fact, that if I ever get the call to go to any of those places, I'm gonna be there <laughs> because it's happened before. My friends now, they're touring around the world. They're doing their thing around the world. Like Quinn, he just 
uh, came back from tour with Kamal Williams and he was in France and Amsterdam and all these places. Stefan just came back from Tokyo and one of the DJs was playing our song, like was playing favorite off of the EP. And I was like, what? <laughs> so I know that my music is not just limited to, you know, America. And um, that's, that means a lot to me because I don't just want to reach. I don't want to limit myself. Like, I'm worldwide, baby. <laughs> you took the words out of my mouth right there. I was like, <laughs> I'm glad that you went on that trip. You know, I know you're happy, but I'm absolutely glad that you went on that trip because you did have some influences going both directions. And sometimes people would, you know, much love to family and the people who may have done that, but they're going to project their feelings and thoughts of limitations and fears onto you. Um, so thank you for taking that leap, taking that big step. And and, see, and now that you've taken that leap, leap, you've seen how far you can fly now. So I think that's amazing. But at this moment, we're going to take a quick commercial break and we'll be back with the makings of Ari. Thank y'all. Okay. Hey. What's going on? It's your host, Drake. Be Drake with everything culture. Just want to butt in real quick and ask for y'all support. Now, y'all know I greatly appreciate all the love that you're showing listening to the show. But I have to ask, could y'all please leave us a review? And if you don't know how to leave a review, don't worry. I got you. You can go to Apple Podcasts, find everything culture. Make sure to click on the name of the show. Scroll down to where you see ratings or reviews. Please hit that five stars or just leave your honest opinion. Then right under that, you can drop us a review. Um, leave a subject line, the catchier, the better. And just tell us how you feel. That goes a long way with supporting us. But let's say you don't have an iPhone. What should you do then? We got you with that too. You can go right over to Spotify, find everything culture again, and you just want to hit on the ellipses at the top right, and it will pop up where you can rate the show. They see? There you go. There you have it. Now make sure to subscribe to us on YouTube and anywhere else you may listen to everything culture. Um, we greatly appreciate your support. We love y'all, and let's get back to the conversation. Let's get back to the show. Peace. All right, beautiful people. We are back with the makings of Ari. Thank y'all for joining us. So, Ari, what is your theme song? <laughs> ah, we talked about this, and honestly, it's not gonna change. Like I, I've been saying this is my theme song forever. Um, <clears throat> everybody loves the sunshine by Roy Ayers. Now, I will say, if I'm sad, Ari, in a sentimental mood by Duke Ellington and John Coltrane, like I will to say, but it turns happy. It's like just sentimental, but definitely everybody loves the sunshine. Just bees and things and flowers. <laughs> so, Ari, how do you define joy? Joy? Mm. <clears throat> I define joy from within <laughs> I know that's like a complex answer but um I would say joy is like it's a settled feeling of elevated contentment you know it's one of those like you know I don't know it's just such a mixture of things like joy is like gratitude Joy is, you know, happiness. They're synonymous, but they're not the same. Joy is, you know, it's like intentional happiness. That's what I could say joy is, you know, because people choose to be joyful. When they say make a joyful noise unto the Lord, you know, you have to be intentional with how joyous that sound is, you know. Um, I don't know. Joy is just like yeah all of that to me <laughs> joy 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 is the voices of fire mm, I like it for them. Look at you. Yeah. Hey, when i was in college 
back in the day. Yeah, I didn't make it. I made it to like the second round of auditions, but you know, it was the experience. It was all a part of the journey. What's meant to be is what meant to be. Hello, I say that all the time. K said, I said, what will be, will be. I see, I can go down a whole different bo- a route, but we'll keep on to you with the questions. Okay, we'll stick with that. So, what privileges do you benefit from? <clears throat> Pretty privilege. <laughs> Finally, out of the times I didn't ask this question, I only had two to three people that would say it. Oh, but continue. I'm not gonna lie. I've I've experienced it before because in my heart of hearts, I just knew like if this would have happened to anybody else, they wouldn't have did the same. <clears throat> so I would say like um I've experienced it before because if I'm looking cute that day, because listen, when I'm cute, I'm cute. But when I when I don't put it together, <laughs> I experience a lot, a lot less love. Okay. I can say that from bartending. <laughs> you know, if I get cute, I get more tips. If I, don't, I come in there just to say I work today, I'm going to get I work today tips. Okay. So I would say pretty privileged. Um, oldest child privilege. Mm. <laughs> On my mom's side, I'm the oldest child. Yeah. Um, HBCU privilege. I don't know. I'm just making stuff up at this point. Hey, hey. If you feel, <laughs> if you feel like, once again, this is the makers of Ari. Ain't no wrong answer here. <laughs> I'm just making stuff up at this point. No, nah, I love the privilege of being a musician, though. Like, I'm not just a singer. I'm a musician. Like, I play five instruments. But you'll never catch me playing them unless I'm in the house. <laughs> Wait, well, so what do you play? I play the piano, the acoustic guitar. I play the clarinet. The clarinet was actually my first instrument. Like, I did, like, talent shows growing up. But I was in a band before I was in choir, like, always. Mm. Um. So... I would say uh, clarinet, acoustic guitar, piano, um, percussion, and my voice. And your voice. Oh, stun on them. Because she got a voice, y'all. I'm telling y'all, she got a voice. But it makes sense you can play the piano. I look forward to when people are like, oh, that's Ari. Yeah, that's who I was telling y'all about. Remember, you know, this is... very much talented once again very much talented oh, thanks i have to play piano in high school <clears throat> like all the high school but i tried teaching myself first because like i i was self-taught on guitar and piano prior to high school like i taught myself guitar i taught myself piano like just by watching youtube videos and all of that stuff and then um so technically not self-taught but kind of self-taught <laughs> And then in high school, I had music theory and we had to take piano every year of high school. And then I had to take two years of piano in college. So I'm proficient in piano. Like I can read music, you know, I can play and all of that stuff. But I'm not Alicia Keys. I I always say that I can play, but I'm not Alicia. (laughs) Because you are Ari. Why you need to be Alicia? Hello. Okay. Hello. (laughs) I want to learn how to play the bass. Oh, so. yes. I can make my way around the bass, but I want to learn how to play, like, for real, because I love a good bass, okay? I just, oh, that's one of my, maybe the next couple of years, you know, when I, you know, get some things locked down here on the podcast with everything culture. But, uh, you know, I'm I'm Black. I think, I think that's automatically in us, you know, just, I yeah. don't want to sit back some days and just, just strum a few things you know nothing major just feel good with it because I right that. So, okay okay thank you thank you thank you um in what areas in your life do you need to heal <laughs> perfectionism <laughs> oh. um you know I'm getting better at it I I used to really um not want to do anything unless it was perfect but I didn't realize that nothing will ever be perfect and I'm putting it I'm putting I keep putting it on a back burner and then I'm never getting there never getting to 
any sort of point of growth. But I realized like same thing happened with my TikTok, like my flips. I listened to like some of my mixes from when I first started. They sound bad, <laughs> real bad. <laughs> they sound like I'm in outer space somewhere. And it's just because I was putting so much reverb on it. But how am I going to know to be better if I don't start? So, you know, it's just all about trying and trying and learning and doing better and, you know, just fine tuning as you go. I've, so I've tore down the wall of perfectionism. And I've started to look at it as fine tuning and it's helped a lot. But um, perfectionism is something that I've been working on healing from. And I would say discipline, like being disciplined is hard. Who you it, know? It's real hard. And it's like, it's such a fine line between giving yourself grace and like, you know, you slacking. <laughs> like, I know I should be in the gym consistently, but it, it's that, that uh, willpower, you know? And then like lifestyle changes. Like I know that I work at a wing spot and I should not be going in there eating a five piece every day. Like, I, I'm like, I'm not, I'm not going to eat. So when I go to work, I can give me a 10 piece. Girl, you don't need that chicken. <laughs> Leave it alone. <laughs> give me a salad. It's in the chicken. Okay. I'm telling you, it really is. And chicken is not good for me anyways, because I have a PCOS. Mm. So like I have a hormonal imbalance. And so I get a lot of facial hair when I eat a lot of chicken. And I still be like, give me a 10 piece honey hot lemon pepper sprinkles with some blue cheese. Like, I oh. don't and that's my problem. <laughs> so I'm working on it. I'm right. I was just saying I could work out. I can work out all day, but I gotta start at the plate. So going to our next question. When did you realize you were different? When I kept getting picked on. <laughs> when I kept getting picked on in like in school in general like I realized when I was like in elementary school I was like that was the beginning of me knowing I was different because like you know in elementary school it's real basic you got the nerds you got the popular people you got like this 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 so like but I was friends with everybody so like I was friends with the cool kids I was friends with the nerds I was friends with who had, like the labels I was friends with everybody and I used to get like I used to have trouble because my like for an example the popular friends would be upset why are you friends with the nerds or something like that you know and I used to be like because they're my friends too like I like them and so in middle school like it progressed and it became I started to you know be looked at differently because I was who I was you know I got picked on I got picked on they was chanting a song down the hallway about me saying I was too smart huh huh that don't even make no sense y'all y'all saying I'm too smart I've had so many just experiences growing up of like stuff that just didn't make sense to me and I was like clearly I'm different and I think that just me going through all of that growing up and then like growing up in the environment that I was in it was one of those things where I had to kind of just like have a lot of self-talks like girl you're like I'm young but I'm like just be you, you know, just be you. And I started to just be who I wanted to be. And if anybody was upset at that, I couldn't be upset because I was who I was, you know, and I was comfortable with that. So like in high school, I was quirky. I, I was quirky, but I was cool. And, you know, people would be like, Especially because I moved from like in high school, I'm, I went to school in Atlanta. So that was a whole nother transition for me. 
everybody was like, where are you from? They called me Michigan like my first year because I did not sound like them. You know, in Atlanta, they got like a little accent, a little twang. And I was just like, hi guys, how's it going today? <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> so I've always kind of been put in predicaments where like I was always the oddball out and I think that I just got comfortable with that wow okay okay Michigan I got you I got you appreciate you <laughs> you know yeah going to that different high school especially going over state lines even though you're familiar with the area but going to a different school is a whole different experience it is a culture shock within itself so yeah, that's a transition. Okay, okay. Yeah, like I said, I went through that transition from middle school when I went to school in Wayne, Westland, and then I went to school in Ypsilanti. But then imagine going from Ypsilanti to going to Atlanta. Mm. And so it was like, <laughs> I thought that was different. And then I went to high school and it was just like, what? I had Chick-fil-A for the first time. I was just like, man... You know, life different down here. <laughs> they don't have Chick Fil A in Michigan. They didn't when I was growing up. I don't know if they do now, but they didn't. So I remember we was on a field trip, and that was when my friend Jazz and I got cool because she's like, "You never had Polynesia sauce, girl." And so I had tried some Polynesia sauce and some fries, and I was just like, oh, "Yes, <laughs> that Chick Fil A sauce, oh man." Don't give me a see to see that we, we just got finished talking about that. We could, we y'all don't know what we just talked about, but that right there, you see how excited I'm getting right there. I shouldn't be so excited about food. Uh, <laughs> but, oh, I digress. I digress, but thank you. So of course. I love this question here. You have a biopic coming up. But you get to direct uh produce it. You get to pick who you want to direct it. You get to pick who you want to play yourself or play other people in the, your biopic. And you get to say, hey, do you want it to be in the theaters? Do you want it to be a series? Like, how would you, bio, how would you want your biopic to come across? What do you want it to be? You know what? That's a great question. I like that. I would have mine as a series because it's just so much... <laughs> It's so many chapters of my life, man. Like, it's crazy. And I'm only, like I said, I'm only 24, but like each chapter could be a season, okay? Because it's just all so juicy. I would have Tina Gordon direct it. I love Tina. Tina is one of the most beautiful souls I've ever met met we literally like because I used to work on praise this the movie that just came out and you know she was the director on that I was the music assistant and so um Tina like I would see her in the office and we will be wearing similar clothes sometimes like we have on like some really cool jeans or something like the first day I met her I was like oh no she's dope because she had on these really cool like denim jeans and it had like these different like um straps and stuff on it and they were baggy and I was just like oh she's so cool I was like wow and she's so pretty I was just like oh my gosh she's great and so I had complimented her on her pants and then one day she saw me in like an outfit I was wearing and she complimented my outfit and then I was like but your outfit and so she Tina is just such an amazing person like I truly love her. She is an amazing director. She has done a lot of amazing films, like Iconic, Drumline, ATL, like Miss Tina Gordon is not the one to play with, okay? So I know that she could definitely bring um, bring my vision to life. Um, who I will want to play me? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I don't get a lot of the um I don't get a lot of the questions about like oh my gosh you look like such and such like I'm not gonna lie my boyfriend has told me one time he was like I look like Felicia Rashad and I was just like you know he was like when she was younger like during uh you know the Cosby show times she he was like you favor her and I was like well she's beautiful that's a yeah. goal great you know compliment but however comma Felicia could not play me you know in my current age you know so 
I don't know who could play me now, though. Like, I don't know. <laughs> no, it's fine. It's fine. It's fine. Maybe Justine Sky, just because I think she's so pretty, but <laughs> I don't know if she would be me. Like, okay. okay. Or like Ryan Destiny. I don't know. <laughs> I was thinking of someone, maybe not because of the looks, but the personality. And I think they can play it, but I, I'm gonna keep mine to myself. I don't want to hear it. Um, Dominic Fishback. I don't even know what that is. Is that the girl off of Swarm? Yes. Okay. 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 Yes, I do know who that is. Okay, she's cool. She's cool. That will work. I think just she has the the range oh. of emotion. <laughs> she you just don't range. know. I've seen her like I've seen her in numerous films, and you don't know it's her. Like, I like that was Dominique too. I like okay. I'm I'm a fan. I'm a fan. But yes. Yeah, she Shout got range out. for sure. I could give you that. I would give you that. Okay. Okay. Our next question. This is a would you rather? All right. Okay. Would you rather go back in time and speak to your younger self, or would you rather your future self come and talk to you now? I want my future self to come talk to me because <laughs> I'm in a quarter life crisis and I need her to be like, listen, honey, <laughs> just stay the course. <laughs> I think my my past self would be freaking amazed at what I've done so far. But I think now it's like, you know, when you've accomplished stuff and it's like, dang, what am I going to do next? <laughs> That's what I feel like with music. Like, you know, I've worked in film and television. So I've worked on a couple things. Like um, I worked on Cobra Kai. I worked on, um, I worked in the art department on like a Marvel movie for a second, literally for a second. <laughs> um, I worked on Praise This. I was the music assistant. That was my first job in like the music sector of film and television. And I had never thought I would make it there because when I tell you that that was like a job that got specifically put for me because I didn't even start out in music on that. Um, and a lot of music stuff is not in Atlanta. So for that to happen, I was like, man, like that was all God. Um, for me to have my first placement on a TV show, like I wouldn't have expected that from younger Ari, she just wanted to sing. So for her to see the things that I've done now, I think is great, but it's just a matter of now, like, how do I make this, you know, do this for a living? How do I keep the ball rolling? Cause longevity is the goal. I don't just want to get a couple of wins or do a couple of things. And then that's it. Like, no, I want to do this for the long haul. Wow. Oh my goodness. This is amazing. <laughs> okay. My favorite question, <laughs> going back to what we were talking about earlier. If you can have any meal at the snap of your fingers and it wouldn't have to count calories, this is like a meal. Just You just going for the flavor and the feel. What would be the meal and who would prepare it for you? Mm. Oh, man. That's hard. <laughs> Okay, so if it was a meal, I'm not going to lie. And now I wouldn't prepare it even though I can make it real, real good. But I would have like some honey bourbon glazed salmon with like my my garlic grilled potatoes with some crispy glazed Brussels sprouts mm. and some honey butter cornbread. Mm. That's it. And a salad because I'm going to balance a side salad <laughs> we're gonna throw but that salad in there too. for decoration i know but i love sushi too like i love um asian cuisine like you can catch me eating some ramen some pho some sushi any given day but like a real meal that i wouldn't feel guilty about afterwards that that salmon honey glazed salmon mm -hmm. okay. you don't know you but you don't know who will prepare for you though like a chef Okay. Okay. Right. I don't know any chef. <laughs> well, no, I'll take that back. No, because I'll be seeing some people who don't even season their stuff. Um, Tabitha Brown, but she would have to not make some, the salmon. Yeah, yeah. I was just I about to say she don't that. cook. She don't cook fish. So we'll have somebody else make that. Maybe Kim. 
But you might, you might switch up on the bread. You put bacon in your Brussels sprouts as well. Uh-uh. I don't prefer it. Okay. I just like a nice glaze. Okay. Um, gotcha. Okay. And we do love Tabitha Brown here on everything culture. Yes. Between, I love her too. Between I her and Jill Scott. So much. So, same, same. I don't know which one I want on the show first, her or Jill, but I'll come back to that later. Well, yes. both of them will be on the show, but we'll die. And will. And will. And we'll have a good time. I look forward to knowing them too. But yeah. we ain't talking about them today. We are talking about Ari. Thank you, Ari. You're mm -hmm. almost there. We have like five more questions. Okay. You're rocking and rolling. Thank you for spending time with us and sharing yourself once again. It's been so fun. It's oh. been so fun. Oh. So, Ari, what is your favorite season? Um, I love fall. Not just because I'm a fall baby, but it just, fall just feels so good and it looks so pretty outside with the change of the leaves, you know, you get your oranges, your reds, your yellows, and you get a breeze in a fall time. Oh my gosh, I hate being hot and I hate being cold. So I love fall because you just, it's like a nice happy medium. Like you could wear a light jacket and some boots, you know, um, and then yeah it's just like I love ginger and like cinnamon and you know I'm 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 not gonna lie to y'all I'm one of the pumpkin spice girly I'm a pumpkin spice girly I love me some pumpkin spice <laughs> now my house don't be smelling like it but I'll drink it as like a, a latte or you know it's a handful it. of y'all it's a handful of y'all out here I admit it, we alive and well. Okay. <laughs> yeah, we keep it on the low, but I'll be seeing y'all. I'll be seeing y'all. We we here. We got a team. No, have you ever had, man, I had like this pumpkin gingerbread ice cream before. Oh my God. Oh it was so good. I, I have not. It I have was not. so good. Like, Who made it? Oh, I went to Brewster's. It was like this ice cream spot called Brewster's. Mm. It just make you mad. It was so good. It was just like, in no way y'all made this this scrumptious. Mm. It was just, man, 25 out of 10. I got to put my homegirl on it. She loves pumpkin spice too. And I like, I, I would support your habit from time to time. You know, I'm, the, I'm that friend that can be an enabler. So, you know, yeah. to make you happy, you know, let's do that. Bruce I love me some Superman ice cream. I might give me some of that tonight. I'm going to get it so my boyfriend don't see it. <laughs> what is Superman ice cream? I mean, I'm from Michigan, so it's like a Michigan thing. It's that ice cream that's red, yellow, and blue. It tastes like kind of like a Madagascar vanilla a little bit, but it, it's so different. Like, you can't really put a taste on it. It's so good. I'm going to Google it. You know, we do. I'm, I'm from Texas, baby, so we do Blue Bell. So that, but I'm in Seattle. Blue Bell is good. But you know, in Seattle, don't have Blue Bell, and I be missing uh, it. Ugh, ugh, I be missing it. But I don't need it. But I be with it very soon. I know, right? <laughs> I be trying to do frozen yogurt now, but I think I'm gonna give me a cone today. I deserve it. I Damn, love exactly. It. Treat yourself. Treat yourself. Okay. Ari. Yes. How would you want people to remember you? By my music. I want my music to live on past me. You know, I I think that it's really cool that my future grandkids can pull up a TV show and be like, oh, that's my grandma. You know, I, I love the fact that my kids can be like, my mom has music here and music there. Like, I, I think that's just so cool. Like music is an art that lives on past you. And I want people to know me for my music and I want them to resonate with it. And I want it to make them feel good. And I want them to feel like I'm giving them an audible hug. <laughs> it's amazing. Love it, love it. They'll be able to listen to your podcast with everything culture too, to make it. Um, that's what I'm saying. And they're going to come back to all my interviews and be like, oh, my gosh, she was so cool. Yeah, I was, yes. <laughs> what changes do you want to see in your culture? Mm. Unity, more unity. 
I think that, um, you know, when they say it takes a village, you know, they don't just mean within your family. Like, I think that we have to stick together a little bit more because we already get a lot of, um, we get a lot of pressure being in certain settings. For an example, you know, like if you're in corporate America, you know, and there's not a lot of us in those settings, we always try to draw towards, you know, hey, cousin, you know, <laughs> I feel like sometimes though, like in those settings, somebody who might be of a higher status than you within the company, sometimes they don't want you to make it there either. You know, I want people to be a little bit more open-minded about, um, leverage you know an opportunity I feel like we all have the space to win and I think that we don't have to gatekeep so hard sometimes because if that's their journey they're gonna make it whether you help them or not but if you were called to be a vessel upon their journey to help them along the way and you were disobedient to that calling because you didn't want to see somebody win that's on you and that's you're you're blocking your own blessings along that path so I just truly wish that within our culture that we could um we could help each other a little bit more I won't say that it doesn't happen because it does but I think that I would love to see a lot more of it um, I would love for there to be a wide range of media coverage of who we are. I think that we're only getting one sort of angle of who we are. And I think that it's not a majority representation of our people. A lot of us, you know, do not enjoy, you know, provocative clothing all the time you know I mean I like to wear my crop tops and all of that stuff too but I feel like at the same time I also like to wear a pantsuit you know and I feel like I I'm stepping in my pantsuit with my cute hair done and my makeup and my heels like I just want there to be multiple representation of us in the media and not just one because we're all not that, you know, and I think it just needs to be a wide spectrum of us, you know, in the media. Uh -huh. um, yeah, I would say that unity, a wider representation um, by Black, y'all, like, I'm sorry, but I'm that person. And my uncle Damon, before he passed, he had an organization called Cash Mob ATL. It had over 7,000 members in it. And um, within that organization, once a month, we would meet up at a black owned uh, business and all the black owned businesses would come and we would network. I'm in high school, you know, freshman year of college at this time going to these events. You got people who are selling black owned toilet paper, you know, black owned, you know, plumbing and black owned this, that, and the third, like anything and everything that you can think of, somebody had a business about it. And we were really trying to leverage each other and help each other out. And I feel like we should definitely buy black a lot more because a lot of people, they're talking about these designer clothes and this, that, and the third, but like, it just feels good to me to buy black like you know the quality yeah the quality all of that I'm not saying you know don't support other people but also make sure you pour back into your own people too we have a lot of money within the black community and I think that we should you know I'm not telling people how to spend their money but it would behoove you to pour your black dollar back into some black businesses, you know, that's the only way we're gonna thrive. Buy black, support your people. Right. You got a cousin, nephew, niece, or someone out here selling some t-shirts or some ice cream or some cookies. Support that. Do it. Yes. It's easy. And okay. let's and when I say it takes a village, I also mean holding each other accountable too. Mm. Y'all can't be having these black owned businesses and having piss poor customer service either. Mm. I mean, if you're going to be a black business, be about your business and stand right. 
pride, have pride in your business, be, you know, stand tall in what you believe in, but also have good service. Like mm. I'm very firm on customer service. Okay. And listen, <laughs> you know, we, we have to, we have to do both. You have to, you have to be nice. Yes, you have a business, but you have to be nice. That's the only way you can make some money. <laughs> I want to support you, but I don't want you being mean to me because then I don't want to spend my money with you. You can have if you are if you're kind to me and you make me feel good, and your product may not be your product could be a five, but if you make me feel like a 10, I would still rock with that five. I may I'm gonna communicate, but I'm gonna come back because you made me mm-hmm. feel good. That's what I'm saying. I definitely go back. But yes, yes, this is amazing. Yes. You get into that point. Last question. Mm-hmm. Okay. Pseudo last question. Okay. How, how can we support you? Oh man. <laughs> you can. You can support me in a couple ways. Okay. You know, you can stream my music on all streaming platforms, Ari Lachelle. If you want to get a little bit deeper, you know, in your pocket, you can purchase my projects on Bandcamp. I have my uh, debut EP, Ari, What Are You Doing Here on Bandcamp? I believe that it's for purchase for $12, I believe. It's a six track project. So what, like $2 a track? Um, if you don't want to do that, I am coming out with a line of merch very soon. We're going to be doing like wellness products. So like fresh pressed juices and, you know, I also am going to do, like I said, I love mixology. So I'm going to have a line of, um, pre-mixes for cocktails. So I have lavender lemon drops and peach lemonades that are actually made to order. So if you would like them, they are available for purchase. All you have to do is just add the liquor in there and you're good to go. Um, Another way you can support me is book me. If you enjoy my sound and you have an event and you're looking for talent, I'm here, you know? If you're looking for background vocals on a song, book me, you know? I have software, I can send you my stuff, you know? If you want a feature, I do features. You better get it while the price is hot, okay? Um, My price is pretty reasonable for my quality and my service that I'm providing you, so it's worth it. I mean, I don't, I'm not going down on the price. People have already paid me the price, so it's like, why would I lessen the price? I'm just going to give you the price. Um. Yeah, so many different services you can get from me, you know? If you don't want to support me musically, get a drink. If you don't want to get a drink, you know, just listen with my song on mute. I mean, <laughs> yeah, but whatever. Let them <laughs> but, know. Yes. Let them know. Like, I will be listening on repeat. I'm telling you, good music. Y'all know I'm very picky when it comes down to music. I boo the children's choir. So when I tell hey, I can't sing, okay? But I love when people can, all right? And I'm very, oh, like, I, I was that friend. If you got some music and you put it in, my, like, back when people used to listen to CDs and you drop it in there, and if it's trash, I always throw people's stuff out the window if it's trash, like, straight up. I'm like, that was very bad. You ruined my vibe. Like, once again, I listen to me, but I'm I'm, a, I'm not perfect. I tell people all the time, but I'm going to let oh you know, because I love music. <laughs> I, I love good music and people like me. But no, some people like we need that nowadays too, though. Like as as an artist, if my song don't sound good, don't embarrass, don't let me embarrass myself and drop a bad song. Like, and as much as music is subjective and, you know, something that might sound bad to me might sound amazing to you, but I still would like to hear your thoughts because it's something for me to consider before I just go drop this willy nilly out into the world, you know? Absolutely. And it's something about me. I'm I'm going to give feedback and I'm going to expect more from a lot of folks too. I'm like, you're better than this. I've had some people play something and it was like, they clone Tyrone. I'm like, you just repeating what somebody else said in the song. Where's the originality of it? Where is you? Where Where are you trying to find yourself in your music? You know, yeah. But if you popping something that you just trying to be catchy and fly on with that, try to that that will work. You know, you can do that with somebody else, but with me, 
if I don't like it, I don't like it. You know, if you if you okay. give me stuffing over a dressing, no, mm, I'm not gonna be for it. <laughs> like I caught you with that. We'll come back to that. That was one of the questions we had back in the day. But Ari, yes, you've done it. You've did it. I did it. You've completed the matrix with you with everything culture. You're I awesome. did it, Joe. Thank oh. you. Oh. I did it, Drake. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so at this moment, if the people are looking for you and they're trying to find you and you're trying to be found, where can they get you? Y'all can follow me on all social media at Ari Lachelle. <clears throat> So that's A R I L A S H E L L Ari Lachelle, L A like the city, shell like a seashell. Not Ari Lennox, Ari Lachelle. <laughs> and yeah, I'm on all platforms. I'm on Facebook, I'm on Twitter, I'm on Threads, I'm on Instagram, I'm on TikTok, I'm on YouTube, I'm on SoundCloud, I'm on Spotify, Tidal, Apple Music. You know, Deezer, Bandcamp, wherever. <laughs> y'all better Google her. I, you sound like me. I be telling people, I like, y'all, y'all, sometimes I'll just be like, y'all can just Google me. I'll, I would definitely pop up. And type I am Googleable. Yes. But we'll Are you sure Googleable? I am Googleable. Yes. I'm not even going to try that. My tongue get all tied up with that. But, <laughs> but yes. And this has been amazing. And when I say this is a talented young woman, um, great individual in this world um, looking forward I'm glad to have time to get to know you and hopefully to work with you in the, more in the future as well listen to you like once again I was on TikTok and I was like you know I don't try to spam like anybody but I'm actually listening to it I did two three times and I like share it but keep up the great work that you're doing don't let mm-hmm. anyone dim your light um, we value good people in this world you know good people love doing good things for good people I tell you that so Absolutely. you know we appreciate you coming on and if you ever want to come through again any questions favorite thing culture you're a part of the family now you're part of the oh. culture so we appreciate you what a pleasure thank you so much i've had such a great time thank yeah. you thank you thank you for letting me share my myself with your beautiful platform oh and it's a question that i always forget i'm trying to add this on is okay. there anything we can do differently to make this experience better for you um, no, stay authentic. Stay authentic to, you know, who you are and what you stand for because you allow for people to show up as their authentic selves because authentic recognizes authentic. Mm. Okay. Mm. So that is, real so that. not real. Already. And who would you recommend to come on the show? Oh, man. Who do I recommend to come on the show? Uh, hey. So many people come to mind. When I get asked questions like that, it's like a whole bunch of dots just pop up. It's like, dang, so many people. Um, If you're interested in a pop star, her name is Imogen, and she's one of my besties, and she's coming up on the map. And I would check her out. My friend Lauren, Lauren, I call her London Lauren, but she's Lauren. Her name is Lauren. She's an actress and she's doing some great things out here too. So there's so many people I would recommend, man. You know, my friend Jazz, she's a producer, director, like, you know, in film and she's making her way. She She's a writer. She writes amazing scripts and I will put her on here too. I put a whole bunch of people, okay? Okay, well, you send them to me. We'll we'll reach out if they have time. We'll make time. But yeah. yes, this is great. But once again, thank you, Ari. Y'all have listened to the makings of Ari with everything culture. I want to thank y'all so much again. God bless and peace. Bless.